Um, okay, so thank you uh, everyone again for coming to this meeting. The focus of it will be largely what we're doing in the lead up to the Victorian election and we'll have some reports with the end of um, financial year. Fusion obviously formed at the end of just last year and had its first election in May, the federal election, and now we're straight into planning for the Victorian state election. Um, so just a couple of party updates. Um, we'll go through uh, a membership update for last month, look at some finances. Um, I'll also point out that we're uh, desperately seeking some volunteers to help with various aspects of um, party um, operations. Uh, the first of those areas that we're specifically looking for is in accounting. Um, Michael might or might not have more to say on that. Michael Morosky, our treasurer, but specifically looking for someone with skills in zero. That's zero with an X. And if that didn't come to mind, then you might not be the zero savvy um, volunteer that we need for that, uh, that program in particular. But if you have accounting experience, um, outside of using zero. Uh, I'm sure Michael would also be happy to hear from you. Uh, it's sort of a big job to pull together the finances of the, the four federal branches and the one ACT branch coming together into one, um, one entity. And also where we'll be having to manage the finances for the Victorian election and keep those um, separate so that they're accountable. The other areas that we're looking for volunteers are in engagement, communications and campaigns. And we've broken them up into those areas because we've just minted three new committees in those areas. And they're sort of going to be pillars of our operation for the next, for the foreseeable um, little while. This is how we've structured a lot of our work. So we've got the engagement committee headed up by Saha looking at um, our members and volunteers and getting people involved and also uh, reaching outward and engaging with external organisations. Saha, you're welcome to uh, say any more on that if there's anything in particular that I haven't mentioned. Yeah, thanks. Um, just wanted to introduce myself. Um, I ran in the electorate of Reid in the federal election and since then we've had a really uh, an amazing influx of new people who noticed what Fusion was about and have joined. Um, but what I'm focused on is really just building a community. We get a lot of value from people contributing and sharing their skills with us. And if you have fun with that, amazing. Um, but one thing that I'd really love um, are people to just volunteer that they'd like to get involved, whether it be with um, socials or with writing, because we're thinking about things like um, running a podcast and we have at least 200 people that we need to contact um, that I'd love to just have a personal chat with or just to engage with them in some way to say thank you for joining and let's get to know each other. How can we uh, best represent you? So if, um, if you're interested, please send an email to contact at fusionparty.org.au. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, having um, some volunteers to... Uh, to help with getting in touch with the rest of the volunteers is a bit of a bottleneck, I suppose, for uh, organisations like us. We've got people who want to help and we've got things that need to be done and matching them up is a big part of the challenge. There's a lot of um, crossover, I think, between engagement and the, the next group, which is communications. Uh, I'm excited to be heading up the communications committee um, and that will involve a lot of um, uh, the way that we do our messaging and uh, again social media uh, falls under you know somewhere in between engagement and communications and at times we'll cross over with our campaigns committee as well um, so communications we're looking for writers but also uh, people in graphic design so if you have um, skills that you'd like to share with the party in writing or visual design um, website stuff as well I think falls under communications um, please get in contact and the last point there is campaigns so the focus of campaigns obviously at the moment is the Victorian election coming up in just four months um, Miles was there anything else that you wanted to say on this 
uh, Miles is heading up that team. Thanks. So the National Campaigns Committee is not currently meeting due to our focus on the Victoria state election, but we'll be resuming meetings uh, probably uh, either over, over the next few months or immediately after the election. Um, I, either way, it's a small group of people and we are at, at this stage looking at a few state elections coming up and leapfrogging from one to the next, try and build up resources. So the, the longer term plan here is to uh, over the next next three state elections, so Victoria, New South Wales, Queensland, to build up really strong state presences, which can hopefully sort of kick off and take off themselves, and then um, allow a few more of us to be independent at national level and provide the sort of um, hands off support and guidance to to really make all those local campaigns excel. So that's the that's the longer term plan, <clears throat> and there's a lot of smaller, more intricate steps going into that. Uh, from a uh, state campaign perspective, we learned huge amounts coming out of the election. Obviously, many of you would have been uh, would have seen the debrief or heard some of the after action reports from that the AARs, and know how much how much we learned, how much we had to talk about. So we're taking all of that into Victoria now, and uh, we'll, and we'll be hearing a report from Victoria later. But everything that we learned from the federal, well, that same process we're going to go through after the Victoria state election, we're going to learn even more things and refine things and so just continually rolling on building momentum and experience and ability from each of these campaigns so we're, we're kind of going from strength to strength uh, but it's very much a um it, it, we still do have finite resources finite people finite amounts of of donations and members and so even though with each campaign we grow and we grow and we grow in numbers but we still do have finite resources and so everything that everyone's able to give we can put use to that, whether that's time or money or technical expertise, or even if you have, even if you feel like you don't have really any relevant skills or experience, there are always ways that, that we can find that you can help contribute and um, help this ball roll a little bit faster. Thank you, Miles. Um, all right, let's move on to a membership update. So this looks quite a lot like um, last month's membership update. We've got 1,790 members um, on the Fusion books at the moment as of the end of June. And just to break down here into the, the branches that these members have um, either come from or in the case of Fusion here, there's um, this bright magenta wedge with the 332 members. They are new members that have signed up since the uh, formation of the party that uh, didn't come through one of the branches and that that fusion um, wedge is growing all the time. Uh, new members in June, we've just had 13 members of which uh, eight signed up directly to fusion and five signed up through the Pirate Party Australia branch. Um, so you can see the, the difference between June and the previous months where, um, as we were uh, building up to the election, the publicity that we get through an election is unlike anything that we can generate ourselves. And um, when the election is imminent, people uh, see who might represent their, um, their views most closely. And that's how we uh, signed up most of our members. Um, oh, okay. Finances. Michael Morosky, Treasurer, hand over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, I just wanted to, I'll try to try, again try to make this quick because no one likes looking at um, financial reports. Uh, but I wanted to just provide a slightly more updated uh, version of um, uh, the two profit and loss reports. So the first is just for this month, uh, which I'll be generally trying to provide sort of um, each month, which, well, I'll just give a general snapshot of, of sort of what happened. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I think uh, I, there might actually be a couple of uh, records in the income section that are not recorded here. I believe we have in the last few days received some, some donations that have come through. Uh, so that number is uh, I believe slightly higher than at $480 for this month. Uh, I'm noting that I think we have received a couple of larger donations um, a little bit ago, but just um, so you have to excuse me for that one. Uh, but uh, just talking about the expenses that we've we've uh, we've had 
uh, this this month. Um, consulting and accounting. This is actually this is uh, this is more accounting, which is just our uh, zero account. Uh, we pay for that monthly. Um, we've got this big uh, amount that we've spent three thousand six hundred and sixty six dollars and eighty two cents. That is the uh, Nation Builder services um, primarily that we have uh, we use for all sorts of things, including our membership management, um, our website, uh, sending out all of our emails. Um, so we pay for that annually, uh, and that has been paid uh, at the start of this month. There is also a small amount of things from Google that we pay for, which is mostly our emails and some shared um, file systems and things like that. So it's mostly just general IT things we, we require for operations. And uh, transaction fees are generally just um, fees that we need to spend, or basically the costs of mostly receiving donations. So it's usually a 30 cents per transaction times a tiny percentage of those amounts. Um, now, I wanted to just also quickly give an updated version of the profit and loss for the end of the last financial year, um, which when I last presented it was, uh, I had said that was sort of a work in progress. Um, it is. All of this is still somewhat of a work in progress as there is still a lot of work done to be done post-election. There is still some information um, that is still, we're still pulling in and reconciling, but this is relatively close to the uh, final picture. Um, so um, I don't think it, this would have changed, but the total sort of income, so the donations was 37,849 odd, which is fantastic. Um, so as always, thanks to everyone who has donated. Um, expense contributions uh, is just uh, money that candidates put in uh, towards their own expenses. And then we just have a bit of a list of various other kinds of expenses that is now sort of a bit more itemized where before a lot of it was under general because it was money that was awaiting to be reimbursed to candidates for the most part. So uh, a quick note that this does not include money that was spent by candidates and not reimbursed to them. Uh, so there are, uh, in terms of the costs of running an election, this is purely from the perspective of the party itself. And there are, but there are other expenses that will need to go into returns and all sorts of things that will be part of this as well. Um, just quick note, um, the biggest ones there, uh, obviously the administration fees and expenses, the majority of that is uh, don't, donations that went to candidates, uh, donations for candidates that were that reimbursed their uh, AEC candidate registration fees. So uh, those are $2,000 per candidate and are, the, are a significant part of running an election. And most of our uh, funding or most of our campaign expenditure is made by the candidates. Um, <coughs> sort, of sub, sort of somewhat reduced by uh, the donations that uh, you guys make. Um, there's a little bit of a little bit in advertising that is Facebook advertising or social media advertising, primarily that uh, the the party uh, spent. And then there is a big uh, there's a there's a printing and stationery, which is basically mostly reimbursements for flyers, core flutes, and things like that. Uh, and then there's a general expenses, which is still uh, just basically to be allocated there uh, to. Um, it's just basically a placeholder for uh, additional potential reimbursements to candidates as we as we sort of finalize those. Uh, the final the final numbers will be obviously true and correct in the um, in, in the returns, which are due in September. Uh, but this is pretty much the, the, the picture as it as it will be. Um, so if we can jump to the next slide, I just wanted to show some brief pictures on uh, some of the election spending, which I had promised to do in the previous uh, previous meeting. Ah, okay, this one, I think this is the older one, um, Andrea, but it doesn't really matter too much. Um, I'll just say that um, there's there's an extra value in there that's copied from the previous one, but <clears throat> that volunteers uh, row is is not supposed to be there, but um, otherwise it doesn't really change the, change the values that much. So uh, in New South Wales, uh, New South Wales Senate, you can see based on this, this donut that the majority of the spending goes to this AEC registration fees and whatever is left can go to actually campaigning. Your donations do go really far when, uh, when we can get, sort of get past that AEC registration and there's so much more that can go in there. Um, I just wanted so and I just put some, it's, it's usually better when you can compare it to other things, but we don't have the information on other sort of campaigns spending as of yet. Uh, but with a total approximately spend of 5,600 and 
The total votes for the Senate group of around 17,500. Uh, 17, this brings a cost of, per vote to 32 cents, um, which if I believe if we, when we, once we have those return figures back uh, from other campaigns, especially maybe UAP, uh, that number will be significantly higher for uh, almost every other party uh, that, that ran in the election. Um, Senate, obviously we have sort of, it's easier to get a bit of a strong, bigger reach than in the, um, in, in, in the, the, the lower house, um, which, so if we jump to the next slide, um, the most, for the most part, the numbers are relatively similar um, in terms of expenditure. Um, this is Reed, which is uh, Saha in, um, there's, so, but again, a big portion of this is just the AEC registration fees. Um, there are a few sort of additional sort of uh, things that we, uh, different kinds of expenses put in there, but for the most part, the rest is going, going to advertising. And uh, with the votes we got there, uh, that's roughly only about $3 per vote. Um, and then the next one, I think I just did Cooper uh, in Victoria. Oh, oh, uh, okay, so um, let me just uh, refresh. <laughs> it's basically a, a pretty similar picture to the uh, to the uh, New South those two New South Wales ones. Um, similar amount of spending, so about sixteen hundred dollars in spending. To the, obviously the two thousand dollars of the AC registration, um, and with a sort of a similar, slightly similar uh, vote count, we've got um, two point two seven uh, two dollars and twenty seven cents per vote. Um, so I am very excited. I'm very interested to see the the value, the, the spending amounts from various other parties. Um, there's obviously you can't. There's, there's only so far you can talk about this. There's going to be diminishing returns when it comes to the money spent, all that kind of stuff. But um, in terms of the money spent on this, I think for the amount of money resources that we were able to collect and spend, um, the that that per vote figure is is pretty good. I think. Um, obviously, we want to get the votes up. And that might, and that's going to require a bigger spend. But um, if we were able to do things at the same effectiveness, then that's uh, that'd be pretty good. Thank you, Michael. I just want to check for the month ended. Is that supposed to be June? Uh, no, no, that's that's this that's this month. Usually, what I'll provide is the is the current month. If we're doing these meetings at the end of the month, um, it might be that I need to do a month in arrears if we're not too far from finishing this. So this month obviously has a couple of extra days in it, um, and we might. So there might be a couple of things where this changes slightly. This, this shouldn't change too much based on any, any other figures that come through. All right, any other questions on that? Otherwise, we'll move on to the Victorian registration um, updates. So I think we'll hear from Andrea Otto from Victoria. Thanks, uh, Andrea. Uh, and uh, thank you for all the members attending. Uh, what a great turnout. So um, really excited to report that we have got 650 Victorian members or thereabouts. Um, and we are going to apply for the Victorian, uh, our Victorian registration, which is, uh, which is huge. Um, so the Science Pirates, Vote Planet and Secular have sent uh, plenty of emails, loads of SMS messages, made phone calls um, to reactivate um, some of our expired members. Uh, and so we contacted about a hundred of those, or more than a hundred of those, those people uh, and had some really uh, good results. So we'll submit our member list to the VEC, the Victorian Electoral Commission tomorrow. So fingers crossed. Uh, for that, our, um, our fabulous Victorian members will, uh, we need 500 of us to return a letter in order for Fusion to get our state registration. Um, so that will come from the Victorian Electoral Commission. And, um, and there's only four months to till the, uh, the Victorian election. So we're, uh, I'll put a call out for, for volunteers um, and the like. Uh, we will, you know, uh, for the federal ele election, we're a bit thin on the ground. Uh, we, would, uh, we would love to, to, to meet uh, some of our fabulous members 
uh, and engage them in the election election process. Uh, as a, I was a candidate in the federal election, and uh, and it was a whole lot of fun actually. I really enjoyed the whole process. Uh, handing out is great fun uh, on election day and and prior to. Uh, and uh, if you're that way inclined, uh, please get in touch. Thanks, Andrea. Thanks, Andrea. Um, yeah, that's very exciting and. Um, I understand most, if not all, the candidates and perhaps some others, new candidates um, from uh, the federal election uh, considering um, running again. So we hope to um, have some candidate announcements very soon. Um, the policy platform for Fusion that was um, agreed upon in the formation of the party uh, had a federal... Uh, level of politics focus. So there'll be a lot of Victorian specific policies to be worked on as well. Um, what I'm saying is get involved now <laughs> if you'd like to uh, join that organising team. Um, have we missed anything there or have we got any questions? Just a quick query about if we, or if there's been any kind of talk or understanding about the approach with either Senate or certain seats or or that side of things yet, or if that's something that will be um, kind of discussed as we go forward. Not sure I'm quite getting the question there, sorry. Uh, um, so sometimes sometimes we like to focus on the Senate. Oh, sorry, are we going to run in the upper or lower house at the state yeah. election? Yes, sorry. right. Um, yes, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know if any of the uh, the Victorians can speak to that. I'm encouraging candidates to consider lower house runs. And at this stage of the candidates we have that step forward, uh, none have expressed an interest in an upper house run. And we have several who have expressed an interest in a lower house run. Okay. So we'll, uh, there's, there's different strategies involved. The lower house is usually easier to get elected and also um, easier to campaign in for various reasons. Whereas upper house, the big advantage is we get our name and everyone sees it. So that's that in itself is a promotional exercise and there'll be additional campaigning opportunities which comes from running in as a Senate candidate. And quite often we'll also sort of put, put our Senate candidate in for a forefront to go to a campaigning event if there's no lower house um, candidates around as well. The big reason why I'm encouraging lower house runs is largely as a movement building thing. So with a low house run, you focus really heavily in a small geographical area. And so that allows you to, to really focus on doing some high quality campaigning where you, you really talk to members, you do door knocking, you um, talk, talk to local electors, I mean, door knocking, you meet people, you hear what their concerns are. You can get some really good policy out of that, but also you can get some really engaged volunteers, especially if the volunteers are in that electorate. They know that they're campaigning on things that affect them and that they care about and as a small party we have the additional advantage of being able to be really flexible and really nimble in how we approach these kind of things we're much more democratic and transparent much more um approachable as well even to parties uh, even to the medium-sized parties like liberal democrats and the greens and uh i i guess i guess hemp uh, legalized cannabis would also fall into this as well even even those kind of parties that they're, they're they're about a point where they're big enough to have a lot of institutional inertia. There can be a lot of separation between the executive and the candidates and the members, but we're not at that point yet. And with, with a bit of luck, we'll be able to put in processes to make sure that our candidates and, and our organizers and our executive are always really, really highly approachable. Um, I'm just going to uh, jump in any time that anyone says Senate. So Senate is the term for the federal upper house. It is the legislative council and legislative assembly at the state level, unless you're in Queensland, in which case you don't have a legislative council. It's eight regions in the Victorian state upper house, each with five members. It's five in the metropolitan area and three uh, regional and rural. Uh, Simon, you've got your hand up. Yeah. Um, I just want to point out, aside from that, um, having to get, if we did upper house, to get the name out to everyone would require eight candidates. You've also got the additional problem with Victoria being the only 
jurisdiction left in Australia who does group voting tickets, which means if we're, if there's any hope of success, you'd, ha you'd have to negotiate deals with other parties, which can be frowned upon because it would, it would often necessitate giving higher preferences to others that you don't ideologically agree with. So I, I encourage lower house runs and um, I hope we can get to hear from potential candidates soon so that we can get behind someone and, and start running. Yep. It's always good to get the candidate name out there as early as possible. So what are the, uh, the next steps? We've got organising meetings on Wednesday evenings. Uh, Miles, do you want to direct anyone to the campaign's proof at this stage or Victoria or just contact for? Absolutely. To get involved with the Victoria stuff, we are recruiting interstate volunteers as well. Uh, there's heaps of stuff that can be done remotely or online. So please feel free to volunteer for Victoria, even if you're not actually in Victoria. But I'll invite anyone who wants to become an organiser to send me a message and I'll get you invited to the regular meetings. So they're currently on Wednesday nights at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. We can, we can shift that date as well. Um, Wednesday was was the most appropriate with the group we had a few weeks ago. We're, we're quite open to polling that and shifting that if anyone needs. Was there anything else um, at the minute? It's um, We did start late, but it's coming up to 8 p.m. We, we do have a couple of members interested in running as candidate in the meeting with us. Would, um, would any of them be comfortable in saying a few words about what you'd like to campaign on for Victoria? I, um, I haven't been cleared um, from work as yet. Uh, I, as I said earlier, I ran in the federal election and had a lot of fun. Uh, so uh, I'm hoping uh, that uh, work will allow me to run in the state election. I think um, I, I live regionally, so I live in uh, in Murray Plains, which is up near the Murray River. Uh, takes uh, takes in um, say oh, I'm not quite as far as Cobram, uh, right through to sort of between Nyer and and Robin Vale. Uh, it's quite a thin strip of uh, of country. Uh, beautiful country, I might add. If you are if you're interested in a lovely Victorian holiday, come and have a look. We have the most amazing wetlands here. Um, anyway, I digress. Uh, so uh, rate rate um, you know our rates here in Northern Victoria are higher than a millionaire's rates on a you know a Geelong you know beachfront apartment. I pay more rates than those people. Uh, and that's because regional Australians, uh, there's less of us uh, in in uh, in a municipality, uh, and we have more infrastructure because we're usually uh, lots of little towns and one major hub. So uh, you know, so that's really important to to our electorate. Roads are another issue uh, that is of great concern, and um, and for my particular elect electorate. Uh, water, uh, water is uh, incredibly important. I'm a kayaker, and I see the destruction the Murray Darling Basin Plan is having uh, due to the theft of water from New South Wales, Northern New South Wales. Uh, they're stealing our um, overland flows, and that is putting a huge amount of pressure on. Uh, the mighty Murray River and we're seeing really big old trees starting to fall due to erosion uh, because of the high fast flows. So they're probably the three things that affect uh, this area of, of the world. Um, that'll, that'll change, you know, for other electorates. Mm -hmm. The Victorian government's um, bringing in more laws. There already are laws, but laws against environmental campaigning. Yeah. It's, uh, as they as they steal our native forest, and yeah, it's theft. It's a real, theft. real mixed bag with the state electorates. They um, they seem really keen to jump on the opportunities associated with renewable energy, but why wouldn't they? Because that's an economic opportunity, while not having any concern in many cases for um, ecosystems. Yeah, and Leadbeater's possum, the greater. Um, the uh, the powerful owl and the greater glider, uh, th and you know, Leadbeater's possum is the state emblem, 
and they are they're threatened and they are in the uh our old ash forests that that the government is stealing so it's it's going to be a big election on an environmental front andrea or both andreas actually do you know um if the upper house seat that I'm in in northeast Victoria covers the area that Andrea is in. They're really big. This because there's only three regional um, upper house electorates. Oh, so there's three regional mm. and um, five metropolitan, are there? I think it's called Northern Region, isn't it? Yeah, it's called Northern Victoria, and it um, it looks like it takes in the the Alps. It's like Eastern Victoria is really just Gippsland. Not just Gippsland. Gippsland, and fantastic. then there's what west and south, which will be from Geelong oh, across to the yeah. South Australian border. Oh, so, Andrea Otto, did 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 you want to do um, a local representation or an upper house? Uh, I'll I'll stick with um with lower house, Cammy. If, if provided Andrea, work covers it. Oh, good. Um, and Andrea Leong. Is it um, de rigueur to have two people on your ticket? That's a good question. They, it's um, five members up for grabs. I'd have to see what the the usual is, unless anyone's got that information at hand. Please, anyone jump in with other questions while I <laughs> look this up. Are we system. likely to have any candidates west of Melbourne or in the Latrobe Valley? We did have a Geelong candidate in 2019. Uh, and I believe we have a few members around the Narrawong or Warrnambool area. Oh, sick. None have come forward this, ele uh, this state election. Just because I... to the west of Melbourne, there's, there's the big battle over the Osnet Towers. There's a lot of community opposition to the government mm -hmm. over the proposal to just build these massive high-voltage transmission lines across farms. And in the Latrobe Valley... I was thinking if we ran, we could talk to the CFMEU about how to do a just transition for coal workers. Sound like good ideas. Simon? Uh, how about Melbourne? Have we got anyone who's looking to run who's actually in Melbourne itself? Because that would be ideal for to get the most number of um, volunteers on the ground. I can tease that we do have a candidate in the Mooney Ponds area. Okay. And cool. she's absolutely smashing. Okay, sounds promising. If there's, if you'd like me to follow up with anyone, uh, Miles, if you want me to talk to your strong candidate or anyone else, let me know. I'm happy to um, yeah, approach them and have a chat. All right, fantastic. Yeah, I'm, I'm directing as many people as I can towards the uh, Vic state election meetings for for organisers. Hopefully, at, at this point, it's a fairly cosy crowd. It's about half a dozen of us. And um, but if we'll, we'll hopefully keep growing as we close to the election, and <clears throat> once we hit a sort of critical mass, maybe around a dozen people attending the organiser meetings, we can start looking at splitting up into um, more into the overall state panel uh, group, and then maybe more regional based candidates as well hopefully we can start building enough volunteers to have st um, stronger individual campaigns. Uh, Sam has just asked, do we have a number of how many candidates we have in total? Four people have expressed interest and there's possibly another two or three, but it, it's still very early stages and we haven't even started looking at the authorization process and um, moving forward. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping we can have six candidates, um, potentially seven or eight. The candidate registration fee is $350 for state election. Uh, Michael earlier talked about the uh, the enormous amount of our fees that went towards uh, candidate registration in the federal election. The fee there was $2,000 per candidate. So obviously there's a significant difference there and we have much more capability to field multiple candidates for the state election. Uh, I wonder if I've um, found the page that best fits the question that Gary had about um, some shareable material online social media promotions it's sort of talking about the federal election but we'll have a look at it and adam's posted the brand assets which is all of our um variations on the logo 
I don't mean to cut off discussion, but I might just jump to the upcoming events page if that's all right. Ooh, what have I done there? Um, some upcoming events. There's a, a social meetup in Brisbane on uh, Sunday evening, um, 6 p.m. What's the venue again? It's, it's called The Burrow. It's a really cosy old Queenslander with a large underground area. Really nice. It's quite nice. good public transport to get to it. Thank you, Miles. And our next meeting of this sort um, will be the last Wednesday of August. Now, I just put up this um, activism bit here and then covered the uh, covered the address with a, a, an errant photo. Uh, so you might be aware that um, Bernard Caleri, the lawyer of Witness K, has recently um, had the charges against him dropped. And that was for sharing of allegedly um, details about Australia, allegedly spying on Timor-Leste. Now, there's more documents that the government's trying to suppress about that. And there's an action at 9.30am tomorrow in Melbourne. I think under there it says 15 William Street in the city. It's some law offices. And that's being organised by um, Rex Patrick, who unfortunately was not re-elected to the Senate. Uh, I think we might end the recording, but we will um, but please feel free to hang around and talk about any more issues related to the Victorian election or anything else. There is a event coming up in Brisbane related to that. There's going to be a conference in September that will have speakers talking about Assange, Bernard Collery, and related issues around citizen journalism and freedom of the press. All right, I will stop the recording here. Thank you, everyone.